Chapter Three of the Boy Scouts Down in Dixie. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Shasta, Oakland, California. The Boy Scouts Down in Dixie by Herbert Carter chapter three camp fair hold up called out thad of course as the scoutmaster his word had to be recognized as law by the members of cranford troop several of the boys manifested signs of disappointment and impulsive giraffe seemed to be the chief offender as a rule they were not averse to giving vent to their feelings for besides being boy scouts they had long been school chums oh that's too bad now thad giraffe remarked dejectedly you didn't want us to chase after that fellow four of us ought to have been able to beat him in a furious dash and how do we know but what it isn't the very man we've come all the way from cranford to see it's too late now anyway observed bumpus yes he's disappearing among the shadows yonder said davy who had sharp eyesight and i saw him turn to look back at us just when he was passing through that bar of sunlight that crosses the water did you think he was a negro or a white man davy asked thad quietly well to tell the truth thad i guess now he was a coon all right he didn't have any hat on and his hair seemed woolly enough davy admitted frankly i thought as much all along thad told them and that was one of the reasons i wouldn't give you the word to pursue him there were plenty of others though name a few mr scoutmaster requested giraffe still unconvinced oh well for instance we're all pretty tired as it is and to make that dash would wear us out then we'd lose the chance for camping on this part here that i picked out and we might go a long way without running across as good a one and if it was a black outlaw one of those desperate escaped convicts from the turpentine camps if they have them in louisiana even should we manage to overtake him he might happen to have a gun of some kind you could hardly blame him for showing fight giraffe not when you remember that we're wearing uniforms pretty much like the national guard and chances are he believed we were real soldiers not tin ones was the contribution of step hen easily convinced after he had given the subject a little reflection besides added bumpus as a clincher that he knew would catch the lanky scout it's nearly time we're thinking of having supper and sure it would be too bad if we had to postpone trying that delicious home-cured ham we fetched along the frown left the forehead of giraffe like magic and in its place came a most heavenly smile i surrender boys he announced i throw up my hands and give in seems like everybody's against me and seven to one is big odds must be i'm mistaken if it was a genuine coon after all why sure we'd a been silly to waste our precious muscle a chasin after him besides looks like the shadows are a creepin out along there and we'd as like as not get lost somehow oh 
you're right as usual mr scoutmaster i'm always letting my ambition run away with my horse sense seems like i never open my mouth but i put my foot in it somehow then why don't you get a button and keep it shut asked bumpus promptly i would if it was the size of some i've known responded giraffe i hope now you ain't making wicked comparisons the fat scout demanded why you don't think i'd be guilty of such unbrotherly kindness do you was the giraffe's perplexing rejoinder and knowing that he could not get the better of the tall scout bumpus gave a grunt and stopped short they were soon busily engaged in making preparations for camping having come all the way from home with the idea of spending some time in the southern swamp looking for those whom thad so earnestly wished to meet face to face the lads had of course made ample preparations for having at least a fair degree of comfort none of them had ever been in the far south so all they knew about the country its animals and the habits of its people must come through reading and observation as they went along but they did know the comfort of a tight waterproof canvas tent in case of a heavy rainstorm and consequently a good part of the luggage they carried in the three trunks had been a couple of such coverings besides the usual camp outfit about which many happy associations of the past were clinging these trunks had of course been left in the small town where they had obtained the roughly made canoes to be picked up on their return later long experience had made every one of them clever hands at tent raising and from the way smithy and davy undertook to get one up in advance of step hen and bob white it was plain to see that the old-time spirit of rivalry still held good giraffe as usual took it upon himself to start the cooking fire he was what the other boys called a crank at flare building and had long ago demonstrated his ability to start a blaze without a single match by any one of several ancient methods such as using a little bow that twirled a sharp pointed stick so rapidly in a wooden socket that a spark was generated which in turn quickly communicated to a minute amount of inflammable material and was then coaxed along until a fire resulted bumpus always stood ready to assist in the cooking operations because there were so many other things coming along that required dexterity and agility and from his size and clumsiness debarred him that he just felt as though he must be doing something in order to shoulder his share of the work as the twilight quickly deepened into night for in the south there is not a very long interval between the going down of the sun and the pinning of the curtains of darkness the scene became quite an animated one with eight lively lads moving around each fulfilling some self-imposed duty that would add to the comfort and happiness of the patrol in camp and when that delicious home-cured ham that bumpus had spoken of and which had really come from his own house so that he knew what he was saying when thus describing it 
began to turn a rich brown in the pair of generous frying pans giving out a most appetizing odor together with the coffee that bumpus himself had kept charge of well the healthy boy who could keep from counting the minutes until summoned to that glorious feast would have been a strange combination bumpus was trying a new way with his coffee heretofore he had simply placed it in cold water and brought this to a boil keeping it going for five minutes or more now he had the water boiling and just poured in the coffee previously wetted and with a egg broken into the same along which he gave it about a minute to boil then let it steep alongside the fire for the rest of the time better than anything we ever had isn't it fellows he demanded after he had tested the contents of his big tin cup and nearly scalded his mouth in his eagerness catch me going back to the old way again coffee boiled as coffee spoiled i read in our cookbook at home it was good but all the same giraffe as well as several others declared they preferred the old way because it was such fun to see if the cook was caught napping and allowed the pot to boil over besides the aroma as it sent out clouds of steam was worth a whole lot of hungry lads bumpus i've got a favor to ask you said davy as they started to settle down around the fire each in a picked position go ahead davy you know i'm the most accommodating fellow in the bunch tell me what i can do for you replied the fat scout immediately and every word he spoke was actual truth too as his comrades would have willingly testified if put on the witness stand i wish you'd let me sit over there and you take my seat which i reckon is much more comfortable than yours and besides you complained of a pain in your back and i'm afraid of the chilly night wind taking you there you'll face it here instead don't you budge bumpus exclaimed giraffe he's only giving you a little taffy don't you see thinks he'll have a better chance to enjoy his grub if the wind don't blow from you to him i wouldn't stand for it bumpus you just stay where you are reckon you look comfortable enough and what's the use dodging all around huh guess you're thinking of your own comfort now giraffe grunted davy in disgust bumpus eyed them both in distrust i remember we learned in school that it was best policy to keep an eye on the greeks that come bearing gifts he wheezed and so i'll just stay where i am if you don't like it davy why there's plenty of space all around as if i'm to blame because this old swamp isn't the sweetest place a goin the conversation soon became animated and general so that the three disputants forgot the cause of their trouble bumpus was the bugler of the troop and always insisted on carrying the silver-tongued emblem of his office along with him he had it by his side now but thad had given peremptory orders that he should not make any use of the instrument except by special order or under conditions that might arise whereby they would need to be called together like a scattered covey of partridges as quail 
are universally designated in the south we must remember thad went on to say that this isn't just an ordinary jaunt or an outing for fun it means a whole lot to me that i managed to find the man and the little girl either it will turn out to be felix jasper and my lost sister or else we'll prove that the gentleman was terribly mistaken and you can understand fellows what a load i'm laboring under all the time that puzzle remains unsolved but i want you to remember that we ought to keep as quiet as we can bumpus you understand the situation and why don't we ask you to amuse us with some of your fine songs bumpus had a very good voice and often did entertain his chums while in camp by singing certain songs they were particularly fond of he was a sensible fellow and did not take offence easily moreover even though he might feel huffed over some action on the part of his mates he never let the sun go down on his wrath but was quick to extend the olive branch of peace sure i understand thad he declared and i'm going to bottle up my voice on this occasion so's to have it in fine trim to let loose in a hallelujah when we find that it is your little sister pauline bumpus said no more and for a very good reason because just at that particular moment there arose the strangest sort of sound from some point close by such as none of the scouts could ever remember hearing before end of chapter three